All right, so we're here at React Games with Chad Lee, the CEO, um, to tell us a little bit about their company, about the games that they're working on, and about some of the challenges that, uh, that you run into whenever you try and develop games. So Chad, thank you so very much for taking the time with us. Um, we're here in your, uh, in your offices in Taylorsville, Utah. Yep. And uh, it's a fun little place. It's very unassuming. Yes. And then you step in, and suddenly it's just programmer nirvana in here. <laughs> it is. We, we tried to make it very colorful, and uh, it's really nice and comfortable for us to work here. So, um, well, let's hop right in. Uh, now, I've, uh, I, I want to know a little bit about the history of your company. How, how did it start? When and where? Okay, it started in 2000, uh, let's see, 2008. Mm -hmm. um, I had I'd been in the game industry since 94, and I worked with uh, companies called Acclaim, um, Disney, Mm -hmm. for a little bit, Avalanche Software. And I got out to have my own um, animation company. Mm -hmm. uh, did that from 2000 to 2008. And then I got back into gaming in 2008. Um, we had a, a license for a game that uh, we wanted to remake called Archon. And mm -hmm. that was our first game. And that's why I started React Games here, um, just to remake that game. Mm -hmm. Was originally a release for, on what system? The Atari, the back Atari. in 1983. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's a classic game. Uh, it's really the first battle chess, and you know, it did really well. It mm -hmm. hit number three uh, within ten days on the on the App Store. It's quite impressive. Um, yeah, it was, it was really neat. And so we thought, hey, we've got something here. I've got a cool team, and uh, we just started from there getting contracts. Currently, you guys have uh, some projects. I've seen some posters up for uh, for a game called Super Dungeon Brothers. Yes, Bros. Super, Super Dungeon, Dungeon Bros. Bros. My, my yeah. Apologies. Yeah, no, that's a fun game. It's, uh, we developed it internally. Mm -hmm. um, the team just, we had some free time and uh, that's what they came up with. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been working on it for about a year off and on between client projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really blossomed into something really, really cool. So we have a console version, a PC version, and uh, a mobile version that's very innovative. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, I think it's gonna do really well. So we're just, uh, Ramping up the mobile version, uh, the console version, uh, it got green light. Uh, let's see, it got green lit on Steam mm -hmm. uh, just in less than two weeks. So we're pretty happy with it. Very cool. What would you say is the most challenging aspect of developing a game? I think the most challenging aspect of the game is um, making sure it's fun, but also making sure that it's profitable. Mm -hmm. I mean, making fun games is great, but if we don't bring in any revenue, we're not going to make any more fun games. Mm. Um, and uh, you can't go about just making a game for money's sake, because then you'll never make a fun game. So it's just that balance. Um, we've got, I've got a really good team, um, and they work really well together. Most of them have been... Um, at React for about four years since we started. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, a great synergy between every person here. And we're a small studio, so everybody contributes and everybody makes a very large impact on all the projects. Um, but I think that's why it's, it's not hard for us to develop something quickly um, as compared to some other studios. Um, we've had some very innovative projects come through here. Um, some projects that other studios couldn't do, they couldn't finish. Uh, we've taken them on and finished them um, using new tech that's never been done before. In fact, our latest project that we did for Nokia and DreamWorks, it was burned onto the Nokia tablet. And uh, it was for Windows 8, unfortunately. And that was their, you know, the only one they wanted to uh, mm -hmm. deliver on. But it had a lot of technology in there that has never been done before. And uh, we did it under, yeah, under six months, I think. But what we did is uh, Nokia wanted to make a um, a game that kids can play in the car while the parents are driving. So we took uh, the GPS location and we did what's what they call, I guess, map transformation. Mm -hmm. So we basically took all the info from a Google map and then we transformed that world into a how to train your dragon world. And working on a project with a device that has never been released before is just a headache. I mean, it it's exponentially makes things so much more difficult as mm -hmm. you're developing. I can so. only imagine <laughs> how tough that must be. Yeah. If there's anybody out there who wants to make games, any advice for, uh, for someone who's interested in stuff like that? 
I get a lot of people wanting to design games. Mm -hmm. Said, oh, I got it. This is a great idea for a game. I hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. Or if you're an artist, if you want to break into the industry and you haven't gone to school, um, you need to show that you have done something. I always try and look beyond what they've done just for their schoolwork and to see if they have passion or if they're just looking for a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And those people who have passion, were, they'll stay up late nights and uh, they'll finish a project or finish some personal thing. And in the game industry, as much as you try and schedule things, you always run into crunch time. We've been pretty good here at React, but there's been some times where my guys, and myself included, have slept here or not slept here and just worked through the night mm -hmm. on some of these things. The last question I have for you is, you know, do you have any uh, predictions you care to make about uh, where the games industry is uh, headed in the next uh, in the next several years? One of the things that I've seen is uh, the bigger companies try and just take a game that was done for a console and then mm -hmm. shove it onto the mobile. It never works. They're totally, completely different play sessions because you're playing when you're waiting in a line or something. So you're not going to want a full, huge experience right there. And that's why. Uh, a lot of those games like Candy Crush and uh, Clash of Clans, you jump in, you play, and then you jump out, mm -hmm. and it's fun. Um, but I think there's going to be a lot more um, cross-platform or, or data sharing between all the platforms. You want your play session to not be wasted. So if I'm playing on my mobile phone, and this is what we're doing for Super Dungeon Bros. So we'll have a console version, we'll have a tablet version, we'll have a a phone version, they're going to be separate games, but each one is going to build upon the other one. So I can be playing on my phone, uh, I'll earn gold, and that gold can transfer to my other devices. Mm -hmm. So then I pick up my tablet, all the gold that I earned on my um, mobile phone is available on my tablet to use. Mm -hmm. I open up a new character in that game, and then when I go <laughs> home, I'll uh, have that character ready for the console version. So that's kind of our philosophy here, and I think the industry is going to move more towards that. We've seen it already. Well, Chad, I sure appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and uh, and best of luck on Super Dungeon Brothers and Super Dungeon Bros, Bros. as well as uh, as well as your future projects. Okay. It looks like you guys have uh, some good good things in the works here. Yeah, we do. We're happy to be here, and and it's just a good place to be right now. So I appreciate you coming up, and no problem. We appreciate you giving us the time. Okay, thanks.